All right, here we are. Yesterday we did Splat Zones maps. Today we're going to be doing the tower control maps. Uh, a reminder, this is a list of which maps I think we should be favoring in a tournament map list. Uh, the, the phrase, I think, is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. This is not a, a synthesis of the opinions of a bunch of like top players and community figureheads and everything. This is me, just my personal opinions on the subject. Um, my criteria for this are going to be that the tower path needs to take you on a pretty complete tour of the map. There shouldn't be just like areas of the map that are basically useless to you. Um, it should be a map that has checkpoints that are challenging to clear, but not so challenging that they're impossible to clear, and that clearing them doesn't just break open the floodgates and win you the game automatically. That there should still be some challenges for you to get through even after you've cleared any particular checkpoint but that you are rewarded with points for that um there should it should be generally a good map to you know be able to push in on uh but also a map where you are at least capable of defending where you have some positions to be doing that you know good kind of balance and there should be multiple approaches to the map you know while on one hand you know the tower path is going to be make gameplay more linear because it's going to follow a literal line that's on the floor. You should have multiple ways to move around the tower so that there are multiple places that it can be attacked from and multiple places that the, the defenders of the tower are going to have to watch. The first tier is I would play these in every tournament if they uh, wanted to run them. Um, and they're all Splatoon 2 maps. Um, God, it's not even they're not even the best Splatoon 2 tower control maps. Like... I loved Piranha Pit's tower layout in Splatoon 2. The Reef was a pretty solid tower control map. Like, there are better maps for tower control that aren't in the game, but these are the ones that carried over and they work pretty well. Um, the classic, the one that's very, very popular and that everyone's running is Inkblot Art Academy. Inkblot Art Academy, um, it takes you on a more complete tour of Inkblot than most modes will. Like on zones, you are basically going to get up on the enemy plat, and that's about it. Um, on Rainmaker, you often don't even worry that much about the high ground on the left as you're trying to push the Rainmaker, and you only have the one route you can push the Rainmaker, unlike most other Rainmaker maps. Um, in Clam Blitz, you don't have to push any further than their plat. But in Tower Control, you need to go over their plat and further into their base, which means you need to control their high ground at the same time. Like there's a lot of things that you have to do and it's a really good litmus test of which the better team is because the better teams are going to win one fight and then be on the enemy bats and be holding and locking the enemy team out. Whereas teams that are struggling with coordination are going to win a fight, maybe get first checkpoint and then just get walled out for eternity on the left-hand side and never be able to get anywhere. Um, it really requires some uh, game planning so that you and the rest of your team all understand that that top left area on offense is really important. Um, so I like the way that uh, the tower snakes around the map, that it's an S-curve because that shifts the objective line in some interesting ways. Um, when you get wiped off the tower push, but the tower push went pretty far, you're around like third checkpoint area, you can often drop left and pick the tower back up before it gets all the way back to mid and avoid having to contest the right side altogether. Whereas typically you would have to kind of start from the right side and push towards the left and then go back to the right again as you get up onto their plat. Um, so there are a lot of interesting little strategic details here that um, it's just really well known, really well played, uh, a pretty nuanced mode, and a again, a good test of which is the best team. We would be happy to play that anywhere. Um, even in Splatoon 2. <laughs> then also in this would play in every tournament tier, we've got Manta Maria. Um, Manta Maria tower control is one of the more popular tower control modes uh, as well. The, uh, the tower path is pretty vulnerable, um, which isn't a bad thing. It makes it so that you do have to like push in and get control of whole areas of the enemy spawn. 
Um, there's high ground pretty much all the way around the tower, almost the entire way that you're, you're pushing up, uh, which makes it so that your priority is map control and not just like getting on the tower and trying to stay on the tower. You're, you're going to get splatted if you do that. Um, but the tower also makes a nice little platform to hop over onto that high ground and try to take it over. And so you are rewarded pretty heavily for being able to make it that far. Um, that makes different parts of the map important. You have to hold the enemy bunker. You also want to be looking at the uh, top left side so that the enemy team doesn't drop in from there. Once you can, once the tower is in position, you want to be getting people over the left-hand side so that they can start infiltrating the rest of the enemy base. Um, there are a lot of different angles to watch. There are a lot of different ways to get at the tower. And the, the tower path makes it so that pretty much everything on the map is important. Um, even though it's a really large map, like your spawn matters because if they get to third checkpoint, then you have to defend from there. But also, even if you're going out on the right-hand side while the tower is moving to the left, that gives you a flank angle, that gives you high ground over it. Um, there's basically no part of this map that doesn't matter here, which is the sign of a well-drawn tower path. So um, really well-designed, I think. Gives a lot of uh, options for the defense, but also let, rewards the attackers for being able to take control. Then uh, Surgeon Shipyard is another very popular one. Um, one of the things that I really don't like about Sturgeon is the way that um, there's this big awful pit in the middle of both teams' sides, the uh, the court area right underneath their snipe, where when you're pushing back out into mid, when you're trying to retake, it's really awful to try and push past that. Um, it's really hard to get into mid because you have to push up uphill to get in there. Um, that's one of the, the weaker points of the map in a lot of modes. But in tower control, you kind of get past that because the attacking team is going to want to push the tower into that low ground area. So at a certain point, the disadvantage of having to run uphill is applied to them too, because now when they try to retreat, they have a wall behind them. And so I think that uh, that weakness of the stage is mitigated significantly by that. You have a lot of good defensive high ground that the defending team has to watch out for. There are a lot of interesting flank routes or off angles that you can take to attack the tower, but it is still pretty strong on offense. Like uh, an offensive team that's able to get control of the enemy street will often be able to just push for a KO. It is pretty fast and it can go in a hurry. Um, so I think it's pretty well balanced for a number of different kinds of team comps. You've got a lot of what long range weapons that can use the greats, they can use the high ground, but the short range weapons have all these walls that they can hide underneath and kind of sneak forward and uh, get into advanced positions and hold those high ground positions away from the long range weapons. So really fond of this one. And again, like in uh, a lot of the good ones here, the tower path is gonna take you on a complete tour of the map. Even if the tower is at first checkpoint on the left side and you're trying to defend it from the right side, you can still defend it from the right side. And actually flanking through mid is one of the best ways to do that. So you do have to watch everywhere. You do have to have eyes on pretty much everything. Um, everywhere can be useful depending on the situation. So pretty well designed for that. Next up and not complaining. Um, these kind of all share a very similar uh, problem which is that they're all just a little too narrow to allow you to get bit major shifts in where you have to control from the tower path. Um, so, for example, on Undertow, um, it does snake. So it'll you know start in mid, and then it'll move left and then come back to right. And if they're pushing, it'll go right and then come back to left. And that's, in theory, a good thing, except that the tower path, in order to do that, is basically going to scrape the, like, extreme sides of the map because it's so narrow. Um, you're going to go left, and you're barely going to even be able to fit a defending player in any further to that side, uh, to the defender's right, to your left. Um, it's just... The tower is on left, so we need to control left. The tower is in middle, so we need to control middle. It's not like the maps above where 
during the tower push, there are multiple routes you can approach the tower from to try and defend it. Um, you're either going to be, you know, on undertow, you're going to be dropping from that high ground in the middle, or you're going to be dropping from the high ground on your right, the tower's left. And one person can kind of watch both of those things a lot of the time. Um, until you start putting multiple members of the defending team over the top, you can kind of just hold down both areas with just a single splatling or a crab tank or something like that. Um, so these maps are a little bit more awkward. They kind of funnel more people into smaller areas. Um, the scrap around like the area between first and second checkpoint on Hagglefish, for example, is just really, really clumped and scrappy and not great to try and play a lot of long range weapons on. Um, it's really susceptible to just being bombed out or specialed out. Um, Mako Mart has a little bit more movement from one side to the other, but it's more like when the tower moves, the entire team shifts over. And again, there's just kind of a scrum around the second checkpoint, especially on that map. Um, so all of these have about that same problem, but overall, that's not a big enough problem for me to say never run this in tournament. Um, maybe, the, you know, more of a counterpick sort of deal, but um, I think these are still very solid compared to what comes after, and I wouldn't ever complain about having to run them. Next up are maps that I'd rather not be on map lists, but if they are, like, eh, whatever, I'm not going to whine too much about it. Um, so eel tail, um, eel tail tower is in my opinion, the best eel tail, um, except for, I guess, rainmaker cause rainmaker actually does have a way to back up. Um, yeah, it's probably rainmaker, but like one of the great things about this version of eel tail is that there is no bridge through the, the, uh, through your side that the enemy team can just put a crab tank on and lock you out. Um, or a Zuka or whatever else. That bridge doesn't exist on this map mode, which makes it so that it's a lot less lockout heavy. Um, there's much less of that high ground that's really difficult to contest. And so you're going to be able to retake it much more often. Um, and that's a beautiful thing about it. It still has the problem, though, that as soon as you drop as the attacking side, there's no way to back up. There's no ramp for you there. Um, one thing that's really nice is that in mid, there is. In mid, on the left side, you actually can just back up, up the ramp. Um, and I don't know why that feature's not there in literally all of the other modes. That would make every single other mode better. Um, but it's not there in others. It is there in tower. And I think that having that um, pillar on the left side, as well as the high ground on the right, makes it a lot more strategically interesting because you have to be able to control both of those to push the tower through, but that right-hand side becomes sort of irrelevant if you just try to stay there. And so it forces you to move up, it forces you to take more ground and control that area so that the defending team can't come in from behind. Um, there are some, some interesting ideas. Um, it does kind of collapse in on itself in the last after the last checkpoint. Like, the last checkpoint being through that trench is basically just, if you clear that checkpoint, you win the game. Because um, it's just so hard to get on top of that and really stop it once it's got that kind of momentum in it. Next up, we've got Humpback Pump Track. Um, this is a very, very good map overall. I think that Tower is absolutely its weakest mode. Um, I don't think there's any question in my mind about that. Um, I'm not considering Turf War. Uh, I still think it's a pretty good Turf War map. Um, maybe a little bit hard to get into the enemy side, but um, overall, like, I think Tower Control is just the weakest. Um, and the reason for that is that the Tower Path is in a really awkward spot. Uh, while it does take you on a pretty complete tour of the map... While it's moving forward past the first checkpoint, it goes through a trench and it goes right next to the enemy plat, the primary defensive position for the enemy team. And it just kind of stays there and sits there. 
and it's really awkward and scrappy. There are a lot of weird ways you can defend the tower from there. Um, it doesn't feel great. It feels like too difficult to get a good push going where you have to clear someone out of an area that seems really only like tangentially related to where the push is. Um, you can't really fan out around it because you have to get to the other side of a wall away from the tower to actually be defending. Now, it is nice that you have the block that lets you jump onto the enemy plat from there, and that gives you another pushing option. And I kind of wish that they were there and that were there in some other modes because that would be a lot more interesting. Um, but the tower position makes it so that a lot of it just kind of boils down to either overwhelming that spot with specials or kind of diving in and creating a scrum on the tower and it, it gets really messy and not as tactical because of the way that you're in this like death star trench so i again will will not super complain about having to play this map in what in part because it's really good for inkjet and i like inkjets um but that part of the map is really awkward and then once you get towards that like third checkpoint area, it snowballs out of control in a hurry because the tower goes up into this position where it's really difficult to contest because it's up in the air. So you can't like jump on the tower for a good 10 or 15 points. And if you were chasing the tower from behind and then it started to go up and you missed it, now you've got to go all the way around the bunker and come back up the other side and they have advantage on you as you're going over because they have high ground. So tower path is in some really awkward spots on that map, and that's why I wouldn't rate it as highly. In ship shape, it feels a little bit too easy once you win the first fight to get it like all the way to 50 points. Um, those first few points just kind of blow off the clock too easily because um, it moves up from mid. It takes you up to high ground to the most easily defensible position on the entire map, which is um, your left side, the enemy's right. Um, that high ground up there is very difficult to contest. And having to not only scale up all of that high ground, but then get up a tower once you get there to stop it, that's just too tall of an order. And what a lot of teams end up doing is just as soon as they lose the first fight, they're like, nah, we're just going to lose the first checkpoint. We fight for mid. Um, and I don't like that, like the first half or so of the tower push seems so much of a foregone conclusion. Um, it, it makes it too much of a battle of inches, um, makes it so that there's too little of the map that you have to really fight to get the tower through. Once you do get it to about that like third checkpoint area, you've got all this really nasty high ground over the top of it that makes it a lot easier to stop the tower from KOing. Um, but it's kind of just like who can inch the tower like one point further before they get to that really difficult spot. Um, and it doesn't feel like there's quite as much uh, expression of which team was really playing tactically better on the day. Barnacle. Um, Barnacle is very, very snowball-y, like we've talked about on uh, Splat Zones before. Um, it's something where once one team gets control, it's very easy to lock out. The tower path is largely... Um, it largely goes according to that. You win one fight, you're probably going to get to 40. And then something really awkward happens, which is that it goes uphill into the enemy side and then goes across some unpaintable turf. So on the one hand, you kind of need to get players up and over the left side ahead of time so that they can be in position to defend the tower. On the other hand, though, the tower can often pretty much stand on its own because the tower rider has high ground over everybody up there. And there's unpaintable turf around the tower for some reason, which means that someone who's trying to approach the tower, has to, they can't swim up to it. They can't just swim straight up to the tower wall. A lot of the time they have to like walk to it or they have to expose themselves pretty badly. So it snowballs and continues to snowball even after you get through that checkpoint. Um, I don't think there's anything t like super egregious about this map. Just it's really, really swingy and I probably wouldn't like to see it in a tournament map list. Umami Ruins, it's crazy. I, I'm trying to remember the last time I played this map mode, uh, Tower Control Umami Ruins. It's very rare. Um, 
And so there might be some aspect of it that I'm neglecting that should make me put it lower. Um, I could definitely see this one being worse than I have it placed here. But uh, it's the interesting part of Umami Ruins is generally the middle of the map. And the tower doesn't stay there for very long. Once the tower gets into the enemy base, it kind of becomes too easy to lock out. There isn't enough variety in the different places that the players can spawn. Um, and not a lot of cover for them to work with to let them get back to the tower and defend it. And you often just lock out with like crab tanks or zookas or something like that once you get into that kind of a position. So in most modes, it's all about whether you can get through choke, whether you can get through that choke point into the enemy base. And here on tower, that just kind of happens pretty soon. So you lose that choke point and it snowballs from there and it's kind of rough. So not a huge fan. Brinewater um, is another map where uh, once you've got a pretty good lead, there aren't that many places the defenders can actually attack from. Um, but I think it is a lot more interesting on the, the first half of the map, for sure. Um, there are a lot of ways that you can drop down and flank. Um, there, you can go far left. When it's on, you know, it's still in mid or further to the left, you can go out on the right side and come around from uh, the back end. And those are pretty valid ways to play it, especially since, unlike in Rainmaker, the tower moves fairly slowly, and so you have time to go for flanks. You have time to get in position before they're going to, say, get through a checkpoint and still get something done that way. Um, you have to fight all the way uphill to get to the KO, which I think is a very good thing. I think it should be more and more difficult to push the tower the further you get into the enemy side. And this is a map that does that very well. This is a map that forces you to earn your way to that KO because it's only going to get harder and harder. Except that there are some points on the tower path where it's a little bit too easy to stop people from shooting at it uh, once you get close to the top. So it's almost there. Um, and if this were on a map list, again, I wouldn't complain a ton, just it's definitely not the best choice. Crab Leg Tower is very weird because on most maps, you take control of an area and then you push forward from that area to continue controlling the objective. This is one of the few map modes in any of Splatoon where you actually have to go backwards. You take space and then you just have to back away from it to continue defending the objective. It'll go to first checkpoint, which is, you know, relatively normal. And then, you know, even if you get someone over on the enemy plat or something like that from the tower, the tower just backs up away from them and their position doesn't matter for another 50 points of scoring. And it's so weird that it does that. Um, it makes it so that moving back into that second checkpoint just clumps everyone together because the defending team, uh, you know, they had their backliners back in that kind of position. And so those backliners are kind of going to stay in about that place. But then all the frontliners are coming in to the same position as they are. And all the defenders are shifting left away from where the first checkpoint was. So if you were defending first checkpoint, you don't have anything to defend anymore. And they just all converge on that one spot. And a lot of people tend to go down there. And it's really just a scrum again. Um, anytime that you're creating these positions where the, the game is shifted reliably towards just a bunch of players diving in and hoping they come out alive. Um, I don't think that's as interesting strategically, and I don't think that's the way that you want to be designing the map. So that part's really weird. And I think one of the things that I like the least actually is the last 30 points, because the last 30 points are very difficult to defend. Again, if you put the tower over unpaintable turf, that makes it that much more difficult for someone to approach the tower and get on top of it. And getting on top of the tower is a very important defensive tactic to be able to slow the tower down or stop it. Um, because when you're on the tower and somebody else is on the tower, you freeze the tower in place. Um, you make it so that it isn't making forward progress. And that's a way that you can stall. But if you can't ever get there because the enemy team just sees you, you're not able to swim up, you're not able to get there quickly, you're a bigger target as you move toward it, um, you're probably just going to get shot out of it. And those last 30 points or so can really tick away from you, especially since there's not a lot of high ground around it. So one of the weaker crab, crab leg uh, modes, in my opinion. But 
Now we come to the ones that are really pretty stinky. That if this is run at a tournament, I'm like, why are we running this map mode here? This is not good. Um, starting with Wahoo World, I will give Wahoo World this. It would have been in God Awful tier in Splatoon 2. They drastically improved the tower path for this game. In Splatoon 2, the tower getting through first checkpoint was usually enough points to win in solo queue. It was just a stalemate for so long because the tower had to go through this area of the map that was wide open at the bottom of a bowl. No cover basically anywhere. It was so hard as the attacking team to get control of enough space to be able to hold it in there. Now, that still does kind of happen, except that because you have to fight for so much of mid first, the attacking team has more time to get into position and make it safe for the tower to ride through that area of the map. Um, the fact that it does a little bit more of a zigzag on the way down is really nice. Um, that first checkpoint area is really well positioned. I like that you can jump now from the left side plat over into mid in a way that you couldn't in Splatoon 2. Um, there are a lot of good things that they fixed about the map, and I have to give credit for that. It's just, it's still not a great map mode, <laughs> even so. It has the walleye problem of being very difficult to push through mid and get any kind of control. Um, and this is not zones, so that bridge is not going to be available all the time. Um, and it still has a bit of that problem where once it gets down into the enemy court, it's just too easy to defend, um, where if you aren't able to control the enemy court, then it just kind of runs away with the game. Um, because the positions that the opposing team, the, the positions that the pushing team have to control to let the tower move freely are so far advanced that they're, if, if they're able to take them, they're probably just spawn camping and you're probably going to get like 60 points immediately. Whereas um, if they're not able to get that kind of control, then the, it's just a, stuck at 50 for so long. So still not great, but definitely better than it was. This is uh, absolutely the worst mode in the game for Museum. I will hear no other arguments. It's not close. Um, the problem with tower control on this mode is that there is only one way into the enemy base without a zip caster or an inkjet. And that is this tiny little block on your left side, the pushing team's right side. That's it. That little choke point right there is the only way up. And that funnels everybody into one place. It makes it so that you rely on specials that can brute force your way in. Um, I always run a 52 there specifically because I need the wall to be, be able to keep myself safe when I try to move up the wall. Because otherwise, I don't know how I get through there. And you shouldn't need something like a splash wall to just be able to push normally through an area of the map. You should at least have a second option. Just put the block back in from Clam Blitz and this immediately becomes a better mode. Um, you need at least two ways to get in because otherwise people are just going to spam that one spot with like fizzy bombs or just have a charger or a splatling watching it or something and it's just a kill zone there and nobody ever gets past that choke point um very very annoying and uh it forces you to play some really weird scrappy fights around the tower that you would rather not have to set up that way scorch gorge um is in a lot of map modes pretty good and this one is like so close to being good. I like most of Scorch Gorge Tower. The problem occurs after you get past second checkpoint. After second checkpoint, the pushing team has the advantage, which is not the way that it should be. Like I mentioned with Brinewater, I give it credit for the fact that you have to push uphill the entire way into your KL. With Scorch Gorge, you have to push uphill to get to second checkpoint, and then all of a sudden it becomes just way easier because by the time you've got control of the area around second checkpoint, by the time you've secured all that, you have all of the positions that you need to just KO after that. You might need to push a little bit further up. It might help to get like a frontliner up to the top right to deal with a backliner up there or something, but you have all of the high ground that you need to be able to push through to KO. So at that point, you just kind of have to throw yourself as the defender onto the tower and hope that you come out alive or something. Um, 
it also makes it really susceptible to crack and cheese because it's just difficult after that point in time to stop the runaway train that is the tower. It's moving downhill. So I really don't like that aspect of it. Uh, and that is exactly what is wrong with Flounder Heights Tower as well. I'll move that over here so we can talk about that at the same time. Um, after second checkpoint on Flounder Heights Tower, the tower is moving downhill almost all the way to KO. And so exactly the same things that I said earlier apply here. It's a pretty good map up until it hits that second checkpoint area. But then once you've got control of that, you've got all of the high ground you need to keep pushing in. So same exact problem, same exact weakness, and I would put them in about the same place. Hammerhead Bridge is really, really bad on tower. And again, I actually like the middle of this map in a lot the same way that I liked uh, Walleye Warehouse. This is very similar as a map to Walleye Warehouse from Splatoon 2, where the middle of the map is actually pretty playable. Um, even more so, I think, in Hammerhead than it was in Walleye for a variety of different weapons. You have a lot of cover that you can use as a short-range weapon, but if you stay out on the wrong sight line for too long, then you are going to get sniped or shot by a splatling. And all of them have kind of ways that they can back up or ways that they can draw people out to the sides. It works pretty well for skirmisher weapons, like your, your brushes and CDSs and stuff like that really like those sides. Like the middle of the map is really well designed. But then as soon as you start pushing up into the enemy side, the map just narrows and narrows and narrows until it's all one choke point. And that sucks, because that means that the more of an advantage you get, the easier it is for you to keep people off the tower here. Um, it's better in zones, because you're not going to push that far past the zones most of the time, uh, unless you've won two fights in a row. But in tower control, you need to push past the middle of the map just to get any points at all. And the further and further you get on that scoring push the more clumped and narrow and the more it just requires you to brute force, the less cover you have. It's just really unfortunate the way that that works out. Um, a single inkjet, again, clears everyone who wants to be attacking the tower on the push, even past like second checkpoint. So it's very hard to defend and this is a real snowball runaway train of a map. Mincemeat... This might be the best mincemeat mode. I think the other argument is definitely Rainmaker. But um, while it still has all of the problems of mincemeat, way too susceptible to a backline weapon, and way too few ways to push forward, which disincentivizes using short-range weapons, <laughs> the weapons that, like, most of the, the community plays because there are, there's only room for so many anchors on a team. You know, it just makes it feel really bad to play for a lot of people. Um, and those that do get to play it pretty well are like immensely too powerful compared to everything else. Um, now this does make it so that it's harder to run a Tentabrella over the top crates and stuff. Um, which I don't know is necessarily a good thing, just makes it really hard to get on the tower at all. The tower is just in the most indefensible position on the map. It's on top of a whole bunch of grating that's really hard to walk across, really hard to exist on safely. Um, so you do really have to win a fight pretty hard to ever grab it in the first place. And then it moves over into this left position where anything long ranged is just going to have pot shots on the tower rider the entire time you're trying to break through that checkpoint. And there isn't a great way as the attacking team to even clear them out of the way because you can't reach them. You have to go all the way around on the, the crazy flank on the right-hand side to be able to stop someone from stopping it on the left. And you don't, you literally don't have time to get into that position before the tower gets to that spot. So it's kind of just like you're, you're going to be a sitting duck on tower for some amount of time and you either stall for a really long time to let your flank come into position or you just kind of muddle your way through and hope you don't get sniped. Um, it's really uncomfortable playing there. Once you get it over to the right-hand side, it starts to feel like a tower control map again. You are still having to push uphill. You still have high ground that the defending team can use to contest. But you have ways to influence that spot as a pushing team after that. You have ways of getting people up onto the enemy plat. You can jump them across from the tower. You can uh, flank them around on the right-hand side. And that's super nice. 
And that is, you know, having any part of the map where mincemeat feels good is an improvement on most of the mincemeat modes. So I give it credit for that. It gets above the walleye warehouse threshold. It gets above that gap. The one map that doesn't get across that gap and it fails spectacularly and even attempting to get across that gap is Mahi Mahi Resort. Mahi Mahi is, in my opinion, the worst design stage in all of Splatoon, at least the version that was in Splatoon 3. And this is the worst mode in Mahi Mahi, hands down, in my opinion. Um, there's nowhere you can stand on this map. There is even less space than there is on most of the modes on this map. You have a river through the middle of the map that you can fall into and get splatted from. So you can't even move across mid as freely as you can move in the other modes. And mind you, in the other modes, especially early on in the game, this would just be like booyahed and booyahed and crab tanked and crab tanked and no one would be able to move across. It's a no man's land already. You don't need to make it more of a no man's land by making part of it untraversable and making it so that there are only certain spots where you're able to get across at all and making you vulnerable as you try to do so. You also have very, very little cover. There are like two pieces of cover in all of mid th that aren't the tower. And they're both very small. They can both be completely flushed out by something like a rapid blaster um, or a bucket or any, of, any number of different things. Bombs. You throw a bomb at that person and then you just have your E-leader shoot them. And it's too easy to defend. Um, it's just an absolute train wreck in mid. Once you get through the checkpoint that lowers the water... The map does become significantly better. You do have to push uphill to some extent to get into the enemy side. But even, even then, it's not a perfect like one-to-one. -one. The, the further you push, the harder it gets. Because you have to get up and into the enemy base. But once you've gotten your team up and into the enemy base, it kind of just runs away. Um, because you can shark underneath their spawn points. Their spawn isn't big enough to let them take multiple angles on the tower so you know where they're going to be coming from and you can kind of just cruise through that um, third checkpoint once you've got that kind of control over their plat um, there's just a wide open fight with not a lot of cover and if you've managed to get that far you're probably going to get all the way um, really really poorly designed in a lot of ways um, you could say well it takes you on a full tour of the map that's because the map is tiny and there's nothing to it um, the, the whole map feels like just a place where you can't rotate. It feels like there's only one way to go anyway, and it's very linear in that respect. Sure, it goes from right to left a little bit, but you have to control right and left because you can hit the tower from both of those sides because the map is so narrow. Um, this map feels like it was designed for 3v3 games or 2v2s instead of 4v4 games. It is too small. There's not enough room to maneuver. There's not enough room for there to be any real tactics. You just have to brute force through every single engagement with whatever the strongest special, the strongest main weapon combo is at the time. And that will never feel fun. And I'd never want to see this on a tournament map list. That does it for tower control. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what yours are in the comments, because again, I don't want to be the one dominating this conversation. There are definitely other opinions that I will recognize and respect on this. Um, but I think it's helpful to have this kind of a dialogue so that tournament organizers can look to these kinds of conversations and get a sense of what people want to see at their events. And that'll make it more fun for us too, because then we get to decide what it is that we have to end up playing. And maybe at a certain point, that makes it so that as a competitive team, you know which maps to prepare especially on, and you'll be able to get to that point with your team where you can really start experiencing the synergy of having a coordinated plan ready to go um, with f less that you have to prepare for. Um, you know, having to prepare every single map mode in the game wouldn't be a lot of fun, but if you're able to just focus on a few of them and get the, the hang of those, I think that uh, that's great for especially like the lower level teams that are trying to get up to that higher level for them to start experiencing what that really feels like because they'll be able to get more reps on just the few maps that we as a community want to play. So thanks for watching and we'll see you for the next one.